Welcome to Hashtag Managed, the podcast that takes you behind the scenes of building a booked out social media business. Tune in every week for transparent conversations from a six-figure social media agency owner, sharing the highlights and lowlights of being a business owner, and episodes featuring industry experts to help you start, scale, and book out your own social media management business. Now, here's your host, Jessica Sheehy. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Hashtag Managed podcast. I'm really excited for today's guest and the conversation that we are going to have. I'm joined with Tara Reed. Tara is a multi-passionate business and marketing coach for introverted service providers. She loves helping fellow introverts learn new ways to market their business and how to use social media in a way that works for them. Tara, welcome to the Hashtag Managed podcast. Tell me a little bit more about why you started your business. Yeah, so um, I love this question, and I think it's definitely my why has changed. Um, I think initially my why was all about me. Like I, I really wanted freedom of running my own business and working for myself and setting my own hours. Like that always was really exciting to me. And then once I started um, in business, I found that my why has kind of shifted. It's more about my audience now. Like they keep me going and excited about what I'm helping. So it's more about the impact in other people, um, especially the introverts, because I've, I've been where a lot of them are <laughs> trying to do all the things. And I actually, with my first business, experienced an eight month period of burnout. So I know how that feels. I do everything now to avoid that. Um, avoid the hustle. I'm all about the anti hustle and building a more sustainable, fun business that works for you. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that in the sense that I'm a workaholic, <laughs> or I guess recovering <laughs> workaholic. And I feel like a lot of times I've created unsustainable business plans or just strategies in general in business, marketing, launches, all of that that have really led to burnout. So I'm excited to circle back to that in just a minute, but I'd love to know, was there any major pivotal moments in your business? I know you've shifted and kind of niche down a little bit more in audience, or would you say that it was maybe a few smaller pivots that really led you to where you are today? Um, I think there was, there's definitely been many small pivots, but I think there has been one big shift for me and I call it my self-acceptance moment. So it was when before this moment, I was doing all the things that I felt like I had to do. I was constantly showing up, constantly pushing myself and trying to pretend to be somebody who was more extroverted because I felt like there was something wrong with me as an introvert and I had to pretend to be somebody else in order to be successful. So I had this clarity, self-acceptance moment where I was like, this is not feeling good. <laughs> Something needs to change. Um, I need to stop thinking that being an introvert is a bad thing. And I need to figure out a way to use my strengths to move my business forward. And I stopped doing all the things that were stressing me out. I focused on like going deeper into like, for example, email marketing, um, blogging, SEO, like those are the things that I really loved and that were I don't want to say easy because nothing's easy, but they were more natural and more fun for me versus forcing myself to post a reel, especially when they started like really gaining popular popularity at first and people were um, lip syncing and dancing. And I'm like, I just can't do that. It just does not feel very comfortable for me. Um even though I love watching them, I, I think I'm so impressed by how people are putting out reels and content, but I, I very quickly realized that I need something that better fits my strengths. I love that. One of the key principles I have as a social media manager working with our done for you clients is I'm never going to tell a client that we need to produce X amount of reels a week 
And I'm also not going to tell them to dance in a reel if they don't want to <laughs> dance in a reel. And I come about that decision because I I will do reels. I, I'll lip sync. I'll do different things. You definitely won't catch me dancing. I'm not that. <laughs> that's not my personality. Um, I do love when people do that. And it is their personality. And I think that's such an important thing to make sure we're just being true to who we are. You mentioned just really owning that you were an introvert. And I think that's something that is really hard in the online space because it seems like people who are you know, quote, big names in the space or have what we think are very successful businesses and ventures, we just see them more because they're more extroverted and they're always popping on stories every single morning or they're blowing up on TikTok and going viral over there or they're just everywhere, anywhere and everywhere. And that really plays into, of course, that that sort of personality. But I love that you really leaned into being an introvert and really focus that in because I think in business a lot of times we focus on all of the shoulds (laughs) and I think sometimes that well I should do this I should be on reels I should dance I should show my face on stories or whatever that entails but when we're really forcing it that's when really no results happen So I'd love to know, is there anything that you sort of mentioned, like going more into email marketing and blogging, but that moment that you really owned being an introvert, do you feel like things really clicked? And how did that really shape your overall marketing strategy, but more so social media marketing strategy? Yeah, I because I was doing like what you said, like it's it's if you try to force yourself to do things in a in authentic way. You, first of all, you're going to be stressed out because you're doing it and you don't want to be doing it. But then also it's really not going to actually result in anything because people can obviously tell that you're uncomfortable. Um, so that's what was happening with me. I was like forcing myself to show up and do all these things. And then I would go back and be like, okay, I'm doing this because I feel like I have to, but it's not actually working. And you know, once I had that clarity moment where I was like, I I know for it was like a childhood trauma thing where I was like, you know, everyone always says, oh, you're so shy. Like it's a negative thing. Um, or, oh, why, why don't you talk more? Or <laughs> like um, my husband always telling me, like, if I had your knowledge, I could be um, internet famous. And I'm like, that sounds like the worst thing in the world to me. I do not want to be internet famous. I want to um, have a smaller community that is more engaged that I can really connect with and really understand. Um, So that was a big shift, like mindset shift for me too, is like going from, oh, I want to grow my Instagram page to 10K. At at the time I was like, I want that check mark. And it's like, but that's, that's really not what I actually wanted and, and needed from my audience. And I think owning who I am, I mean, my, engagement has been amazing through emails, like the amount of replies I'm getting, the relationships I'm building. It's just, it's totally been transformative. Yeah, I think that's great. And you're really speaking my language when you mentioned, why are you so shy? Maybe you should talk more. I get that and have gotten that my whole life. And that is something that I always wondered why people said that to me, because that was one of my favorite qualities of myself. And it still is. I love that I can sit with my own thoughts and be happy and sit and think about different things. And I just, that was always part of my personality. And I think it's so interesting that it seems like the right way (laughs) is that you need to be, you know, loud and outgoing and extroverted, but there's so many introverts. And when I meet new business owners and various industries, even outside of the marketing world, they're introverts themselves. And it really just showcases where their personality lies and that sort of thing. And I love that you mentioned kind of wanting to reach those goals. I think a lot of people, I think people are still wanting that 10K Instagram (laughs) follower goal. It's still, you know, even though we got link stickers and (laughs) didn't need that Mm -hmm. first swipe up anymore. But it's still something that people really strive for. Maybe that's, you know, they really want X amount of subscribers on YouTube or they want to reach 
their email list to X subscribers, or they want to go absolutely viral on TikTok and reach all of these people, which can all be done. But a lot of times, kind of circling back to what you mentioned at the start of the show is that it does lead to burnout. I'd love to know what is what are a few ways that you either can tell that you're on the verge of burnout and maybe on the other side or just maybe instead, what do you do to prevent burnout in business, especially as an introvert? For me, I can usually see the signs if um, like, because I plan everything. I'm, I'm big on like flexibility. Like I, I put due dates on things and click up, but they're not like set in stone. Most of them. Um, but if I start to see that, you know, I had something that I wanted to get done and I have pushed it off like two or three times, I'm like, okay, if there's a lot of them, then I start to think, okay, why am I not doing these things? Um, am I feeling overwhelmed? And usually that's the case. So for me, I usually just, I have to take more breaks. I just have to step away, clear my head. Uh, make sure that I'm making time for me and not overworking because I, I know what you said about being a workaholic. It's it's hard because we love what we do. It's it's fun. It it it's work, but it's still fun for us. So it's hard sometimes to to break away and remove ourselves from digital devices and social media twenty four seven. Definitely. And as we're sitting here recording this podcast, we are nearing the end of 2022 and we're days away from when a lot of people do take time off and they should. And I know Tara and I both are taking that time off to um, really like rest and recharge because it's so needed. It's such a quiet time of the year, especially in the marketing space. There's really not a whole lot going on usually Q1 or 2023 planning has already happened or, you know, further plans will happen in the new year. But I think it's really important to schedule those breaks. I've recently started time blocking my calendar and kind of doing a couple of different methods to just increase my productivity in the times of day that I'm most productive. In the middle of the day, I am usually coming off of a caffeine crash and I need to take a little break and I just can't create much content or do really any task, even if it's a small administrative task in the middle of the afternoon. But I think it's really important to time block the calendar, but time block those breaks and actually like keep that as a boundary for myself and say no to calls during that time or say no to Zoom calls or I don't check Slack. I don't open, you know, Voxer or my email or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And also staying off of social media. I know it's hard as a marketer and social media manager, but it's really great to just stop consuming that content for a little bit. Mm -hmm. So Tara, I know you've been an entrepreneur for 16 years in the online space. I'd love to know what has been the biggest challenge or lessons learned? Oh gosh, so many, <laughs> I think. Um, I, I think moving into more of like um, human first um, ethical marketing. I've I've learned so much. Like when I first started, it was all about bro marketing and like icky sales tactics. And I'm so glad that things are changing because that never felt good to me. I never wanted to do that. I'm definitely not a salesperson. Um, like my first nine to five job, I was tech support, but it was actually less focused. Like the measurement of how well you did your job was less on the tech support and more on how much you can upsell after saving their, or resolving their issue. And that always bothered me because I was amazing at tech. I, I loved figuring out a problem and solving it, but the company that didn't matter. You had to be good at sales and I was not good at sales. So I'm glad that things in the online space are shifting and it's more about like connections and um, being authentic versus being totally salesy and all of these things that felt a little icky um, to me as a consumer and as a marketer. I think really as we get more into a post-pandemic world, I think more and more people are really opening their eyes to the icky 
salesy marketing tactics and just I think consumers are always have always been educated for a while and we live in such an amazing time with technology that you can really figure out things and find information and so much is at our disposal to make those informed buying decisions and whatever we're buying or purchasing or thinking about purchasing. So I think it's really great that we are shifting into more ethical marketing. I'd love to know, is there any piece of advice, maybe one or two or a few things that someone can do to really consider their marketing strategy moving into um, 2023, moving into the new year, or just making better connections with their audiences? I think one of the biggest things that I would suggest and that really moved things forward for me is getting really clear about your audience and your offers. Um, I always struggled with that because I'm also multi-passionate and have so many different things and topics and I just love it all. So Everyone always says niche down. You have to niche down to one thing. And I tried that. That was more advice that I was like, okay, I have to do this to be successful. And I would get bored after three or four months because I didn't want to just do one thing. And once I was like, okay, I know now that this is not for me. I'm tired of pivoting every three or four months and confusing my audience. So how can I figure out a way to make this work for me as a multi-passionate and not try to force myself into a box. So I started really digging into like the value ladder concept. So I, I love having a lot of offers and different topics. So for me, I probably have, I think at the, right now, like seven or eight different value ladders um, by topic and then three to five offers per ladder. So um, I really think more about my audience, their journey, um, what they need, what the next step will be, um, and how I can help them. I think mapping that out and getting clarity around your offers, and they don't all, you don't have to niche down. You can have multiple ladders like I do. I have a bazillion offers. <laughs> um, it really moved things forward because I felt like I wasn't, I didn't have to only stick to one topic or I didn't have to only talk to one audience. I was able to talk to multiple audiences that maybe have some things in common. And I think one thing that really helps with that is too, because I started focusing a lot on email marketing, like really segmenting your list and real, like if you're a multi-passionate and you talk about multiple things, really segment your list. Like I think right now I have about 200 tags in ConvertKit <laughs> um, to narrow down my audience based on what they've signed up for, what they've purchased. Um, and then I very rarely now send an email out to my entire list. I'm really targeted on who I'm talking to, but still talking about many different things. I love that. I obviously love social media, being a social media manager, but I also love email marketing. And that's always been maybe an upsell or like a lateral sell to our done for you projects with adding that email marketing component. But over the last like six months, maybe six to eight months, we really leaned into owning just sort of being like a social media and content agency because we have an incredible team with different skills in different areas. And I really believe social media and email marketing should work together. They all really work as part of an overall marketing strategy and they are used in different ways to really nurture our clients or our customers, no matter what part of the uh, journey they're on. But I love that you mentioned that you're multi-passionate and basically gave that permission slip that it's okay to be multi-passionate and have multiple avatars, multiple audiences that you're marketing to. Because there's so much talk in the space that you need to niche down. And one thing that I love to share is that it's great to have that niche from the start to really help you get clear and just have clarity in your messaging on what you're doing and who you're offering it for. But once you've kind of proven concept with someone to really figure out where they go next. And I think your point about having the value ladder is really great to make sure that 
you're kind of there every step of the way. I think that really goes hand in hand with what you said about getting away from the bro marketing <laughs> into the more ethical marketing, which really is from, I believe, a place of serving over selling to where, okay, how can I serve this person right now? And how can I serve them in six months? And they can just keep, of course, you know, going through your product suite, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. I'd also love to ask you, I know you have a lot of experience and a lot of offers. <laughs> Do you think that there is a right or wrong answer to what you should do first in terms of your offers. Should you do the one-to-one -one offer? Should you do a more passive product? I'd love to hear if you have any um, thoughts around around that. Yeah, my biggest tip is, is to start with whatever is going to be easiest for you. Um, whatever is going to be easiest for you to create and get out there. Um, and then you're going to start getting data from it. So whether it's focusing on free lead magnets and then you'll build out the funnel and the offer ladder later or if you know creating um a program because you've been doing one-to-one -one services for a long time so you already have that data from clients um basically whatever is going to be easiest for you to go from idea to people can buy it because <laughs> otherwise i mean i've i've worked with a lot of people who have all these ideas but they can't implement and pick one to move forward. So it's always like, okay, what can we do right now that's going to be really quick that we can get out like within a week? Like let's focus on that first and then we can always build other offers into the ladder later. Yeah, I think one thing, especially I know I hear all the time in our community is someone is sitting and really just simmering on their idea. They know what it is and maybe how it's going to be delivered. Maybe they're missing maybe one key component on what the messaging is or like who specifically it's for, or maybe they're hung up and probably hung up on pricing and they're not really sure if they're ready to release that into the world and to just offer it. And a lot of times they have that proof of concept. They've worked with the one-to-one -one clients. They probably have the data on you know, customer satisfaction, client satisfaction, retention, anything like that. But it's just figuring out what to do. And I think a lot of that is maybe a mindset shift a little bit of just wanting to perfect it before putting it out in the world. But I, I do believe that, of course, with <laughs> making informed decisions, but doing an informed, messy action, I think is sometimes where the best results can happen. Obviously, we don't want to just wake up one day and have a crazy idea and have zero data behind it and put so much time and resources into it if we're going to potentially lose that. But I think if we just sit on it for a while, we might just sit on it too long. And by the time that we do release it out, our audience might not even be at that point anymore. Maybe they've advanced, maybe they've bought from someone else, um, or maybe it's just no longer what they need right now in that moment. Yeah, I've definitely been there. <laughs> I think if you're an ideas person, sometimes it can be hard to like, which one am I going to move forward with first? And then the rest of them just kind of sit there and marinate and then you forget about them. <laughs> so I'm I'm big on done is better than per perfect. Like you can always go back and tweak things and perfect it. Um, but nobody can buy unless it's available. And there's somebody out there who needs it right now that, you know, you're doing yourself and, and your audience a disservice from not putting it out there. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. So one thing that I definitely want to dive into a little bit in this episode is something that I know you're currently going through now. And I don't know if you have a plan of <laughs> when that would, would end, but I really want to talk about it, especially since this is a topic that a lot of people in our audience also consider they go through, um, or they're also social media managers. And I think they would love to just hear the perspective on it. So I know you've been on a bit of an Instagram hiatus. So I'd love to talk about that, the decision behind that, because I think as business owners, we need to take breaks. As we mentioned, <laughs> it's the one thing mm -hmm. to prevent that burnout, especially as introverts. So can you share more about that decision and what that's been like for you? And if you do have any, <laughs> any plans to um, kind of exit that hiatus? Yeah, so I think it was um, January 2021 is when I first started thinking about 
do I want to stay on Instagram right now or is it time for a social media break? And I was really feeling like I wanted to take a break, like I needed to. I was like, anytime I would open the app, I, I don't think it was more like I'm burnt out with creating content. I love creating content. It was more like just going on the app and scrolling my feed. I was just getting so overwhelmed with all the noise. It was like, I need to shut off the noise for a bit and like step away from this. Um, but I had so much content already ready and written that I was like, okay, I'm just going to schedule out what I have ready and then reevaluate at that time. So, I mean, that was January and I think I ended up taking the break in June. So I had like six months of content ready to go, which was great. Um, so I was still posting, I was still there, but I wasn't intentionally engaging or like really going on the app at all. I was just letting the content run its course because I was like, I, I have to use it. I created it. So let's just keep sharing it and then I'll figure out what I'm going to do next. And when the time came where I was like, okay, I'm running out of content. It's all scheduled. Um, so what am I going to do? I went in and looked at the, my numbers. I was like, so the time that I was spending on Instagram versus the traffic I was actually getting to my website. Um, and if that was worth the time investment. And I, d I decided it wasn't like I was getting more traffic from Facebook at that time. And I was putting zero effort into Facebook. So I was like, okay, I'm going to take a break. I think this is a sign. I've been kind of on a semi break for the last six months. So I'm going to make it official. Um, I put up my goodbye post <laughs> in June and I've only opened the app maybe once every week or every other week, just to check messages. Um, I haven't been scrolling. I haven't been consuming content, anything like that. And it's felt really freeing. I, I think I will probably end up going back, but I think what I'll do is I'm going to have, I created, uh, recently created, because somebody was asking me, um, a nine grid template. So I think I'm going to do the nine grid um, template with all the important information that somebody would need to know. And then I'm just going to focus on stories for a little bit and see how that feels and, and how that does. Yeah, I think that's great. And I love that you really made a real intentional plan for taking that hiatus. I mean, I know there's a lot of things that happen, like external factors that maybe affect someone to take that hiatus on Instagram, or maybe it's another platform they're marketing their business on. But I love that you had that content to really stretch that out and then made that informed decision just based off the data, which I think a lot of times we as entrepreneurs have the intentions to do that. But sometimes it's and it. I'm just going to say it is easy to use emotion to make those decisions. That's one thing that I've really tried to get better at over the last couple of years is to remove the emotion out of it, because sometimes it is you know, to use such a cliche term, you know, business is business. And that's not to, not to say mm -hmm. that we're doing any bad deals or, you know, doing anything like that. But just sometimes when you have to make those decisions, like, okay, do I keep going all in on this platform? If it's not really bringing that return on my time or just investment, then maybe it just doesn't make sense moving forward. Mm -hmm. So I'm really intrigued with the Instagram nine grid and I've seen it work for some people. I know I think I've seen people sort of do it two ways, doing it the way that you mentioned of being more active on stories, which I think, of course, is great for that personal element, really nurturing your current audience. And of course, people can still find you on <laughs> on Instagram. And then I know people have been doing it the other way, and they've been really leaning more into Instagram reels for their content. I think that just kind of comes down to us as content creators with what are we more comfortable creating? Do we want to show up in stories? Because to me, stories feel like a safer place on Instagram to just kind of share like, okay, here's, here's what I'm doing. I know just a few days ago, I shared that I've been sick for a few weeks and I finally got over that. And I just kind of wanted to share that with my, with my Instagram followers on stories. I don't know if I'd send that in a newsletter, I don't really have any content to kind of go along with that, but it was something that it just felt good to share where I feel like on reels, it's so much more high energy of doing the trends, whether you are doing the dances or the lip syncing or just, you know, sharing reels in general. So I really love that point of view and just 
that permission slip to take that hiatus because mm-hmm. I think that's definitely necessary to do at certain points, um, especially if other areas of business, especially email marketing, are going better, then um, it just makes sense. And like you mentioned, Facebook. I love that you mentioned Facebook because I think a lot of times business owners and maybe marketers who are just burnt out on the Facebook's platform, they're just over Facebook. So I love that it's still bringing mm-hmm. a lot of <laughs> website traffic <laughs> to, to your website and you're really leaning into it. Would you say that is coming from um, your profile page, a group, or maybe any sort of like outbound marketing done on Facebook? Um, I think primarily it's um, my, I have a private group. So anyone who purchases anything from me gets invited to a private group. Um, And then also there, I have finally, I was in about 300 Facebook groups (laughs) recently. I cleared them out. So now I'm at like under 50. Um, And I have my top 10 that I try to engage with strategically and keep up with and comment and share and post. Um, So I've really leaned into that a little bit more, um, more intentionally once I saw the results. And I love what you said about permission slip, because I think that's what happened is like, I had these feelings and thoughts about maybe it's time for a break or to reevaluate. And then when I looked at the numbers and the data, it was like that validated my feelings. And I was like, okay, this, okay, I'm good. I can, I can make this shift. Like this gives me permission because I was feeling like, oh, can I really leave? Will it hurt my business? Like it's, it's scary to make that decision. Um, but I know like it, it doesn't have to be permanent. I could have come back by now, but, and I'll probably come back next year and, uh, try out stories a bit more because I do miss it. I think one thing, you know, knowing that what I struggled the most with was the noise on my feed, I'm probably going to do quite a cleanup um, about who I'm following before I jump back into it as well. Yeah, I think that's really great and just really important because we all go through phases. I, I know I go through phases where I kind of lean into maybe more of a topic or I find a great creator or a business owner and I connect with them. And of course, Instagram's algorithm works in various ways that maybe we love or don't love. And sometimes I just don't see their content for a while and then it'll pop back up. And I'm like, I don't really know if I feel super connected with them. I've started to get a little bit better about cleaning out accounts on my business Instagram of who I'm following and different things like that. Because if I am trying to look for maybe a contractor or another service provider to hire internally, then I, I do go on a mass following because I want to connect with people and have those conversations, Mm -hmm. but then it just doesn't make sense for me to kind of keep following them. Cause like you've mentioned a few times, which I think is really important to highlight is that it just adds to the noise and we see so much noise (laughs) on social Mm -hmm. media. And I think that's a good underlying theme of, of the show is that, you know, just being conscious of the noise we're consuming and also the noise that we're putting out there with kind of making that shift into more ethical marketing. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're somebody who like, I'm a big learner. I say that I'm a course addict. Like I love learning different things. So if there's a lot of noise being thrown at me, I'm going to like consume so much and I'm just going to feel overwhelmed every time I scroll my feed because I, I do love learning and I want to learn it all, but that, that is just not possible. So I think you, you do have to intentionally clear up your feed. Any, anyone that you're following who, where a post comes up and you're like, oh, this is maybe affecting me a certain way, or I'm like, really distracted by this person's content, like maybe you should unfollow them. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's great. I think I, I unfollow based off of content if it's relevant to me, maybe in that moment, or if I've sort of outgrown it, but I definitely probably unfollow more based off messaging. There's some people who maybe intentionally or maybe unintentionally share content that is something that is triggering in some way or another. They're sharing maybe an unsustainable business practice, or they're sharing that this is how you have to do things and you have to do this if you want this life. And if you don't, well, oh, well, you're going to fail. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that messaging just does not resonate with me. And it's definitely something that I'm not putting out there. So when I read things like that, it really kind of puts me down. And there's times where I follow people and 
depending on what their intentions are of putting out that content of here's what I've accomplished and here's what I've done, there's a huge difference, I think, in doing it with true intentions of wanting to celebrate with your community and share those wins and not. And then there's a f- times where it's done to just sell more of your program or sell more mm-hmm. of your mastermind or your course. And sometimes it just really is done to make you feel bad. Like I'm not there, but it's okay that I'm not there. So seeing that content really does kind of put me in some moods at times that I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, we need to maybe mute or, you know, snooze their posts for a while, or maybe just hit unfollow because It's just not something that I want to be reminded of every time I open up the Instagram app. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to know if you had to give one piece of advice to another business owner, what would it be? Um, I think the biggest and best piece of advice that I wish I was told like in my first 10 years of business um, would be to just be open to trying new things. And looking at the results, figuring out the path for you, um, take in as much advice as you can, but don't get stuck in that advice. Like think about how that advice can work for you. Don't ever feel like there's one way that you have to do something. You can always carve your own path based on your personality, your strengths. Um, So just give yourself that permission to play, try new things and figure out your own path forward. That's so great. And I think so important just to remember as a business owner, whether you're just starting out, maybe you haven't started yet and (laughs) needed a little bit of encouragement to do so, or maybe you're years in business. Business is definitely a cycle. There's ups and downs and highs and lows. It's really all about the journey and (laughs) the ride Mm -hmm. of that, (laughs) of that metaphor. Um, So for our last question in today's show, Tara, I'd love to know um, how has social media deepened the connections with your audience or community Um, or how has social media impacted your online business or maybe it's opened any doors? I, I know I talk about it a lot in terms of like my introvert audience. So people think I'm against social media and I'm not. I, I'm against um, doing it in a way that doesn't feel fun for you and whatever that looks like. So I, I love social media. I love that we're so connected. And I think focusing more on the real authentic connections is going to move your social media results forward. Like... Don't just focus on spewing out how-to content continuously. Really focus on making an impact um, to whoever needs what you're doing and the knowledge that you have. And you're going to naturally draw in the right people and attract them to you. And then if you continue to show up, you can continue to build that relationship. I've made so many collaboration partners through social media, um, people reaching out for summits or podcast interviews. And usually we then move it over to Facebook where we become Facebook friends and then messenger um, just because they know I'm not on Instagram at this point in time. But it's, it's really made a difference. And I think the shift for me was when I stopped focusing on it as like, standing on a mountain and just shouting out content and noise um, because I really felt like I was starting to add to the noise with all the content I was creating and really scaling that back and focusing more on building those authentic connections. That's when things really started to shift for me. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Well, thank you so much, Tara, for taking the time out of your day to talk with us and share your expertise. Where can our listeners find out more about your business and your offer suite? Yeah, so my website, thetarareed.com. I do have an everything page which lists every freebie, um, every offer that I have. I do think there's a couple I need to add to it, but (laughs) for the most part... Everything is on that everything page and I have a ton of free resources that you can sign up for. And then you'll be on my email list, which is where I try to send the most helpful information and content and we can connect. Amazing. Amazing. Well, we will include links to all of the important places to connect with Tara. Also, also her Instagram. So we can follow along once she 
gets back from her hiatus and on the Instagram nine grid journey. Well, thanks again, Tara, so much. And until next week. We're more than just a podcast and community. We're a collective. The Social Savvy Collective membership was built for social media managers just like you. It's time to learn the skills, strategies, and systems that you need to build a thriving social media management business to achieve the time, financial, location, or all of the above freedom you're after. Head to the show notes or go to socialsavvyhq.co forward slash podcast to learn about the endless resources and support that are waiting for you inside. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of Hashtag Managed. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. That helps others find the show, and we greatly appreciate it. Come back next week for another new episode of Hashtag Managed. We'll see you then.